Hello and welcome to part 3 of my Hackintosh guide. Um, well, I'm gonna just jump right into it and um, take up this tab here. This is more or less the hardware I built my Hackintosh from. Some of the parts I did have from my previous computer and uh, some of the parts I bought uh, brand spanking new. First of all, I just chose a Sony DVD burner. Uh, when it comes to the tower, I chose this Chief Tech. It's a cheap case. Uh, the reason I chose it is uh, it's um, because it's practically the same tower that I have on my file server. It's um, it's not a very nice tower, but it works. It has good cooling. Uh, solutions and it's totally tool free when it comes to um, mounting uh, the, uh, the components like hard drives and optical drives and stuff like that. Um, I chose a Seagate 500 gig uh, serial ATA drive. I had that from a previous Hackintosh uh, and it's a pretty fast drive. I, I benchmarked it and I get just over 100, 110 megabytes per second of it so compared to a 320 gig I had it's uh, almost uh, three times as fast. Uh, the video card uh, is um, old 9600 GT it is the card that I bought a year ago and I uh, chose to use this and not upgrade yet because this is a fanless card and that really helps on the sound level from the computer the noise and also it gives good performance it's uh, all not as good as the 4850 ATI card in the in the iMac but it's definitely much much better than the GT 120 that comes with the $2,500 iMac power supply of course here you choose what suits your needs the best I use one a 650 watt from a company called Mist. Uh, I don't think it's sold in the U.S. It's more like a local Scandinavian brand. Uh, it has a modular cabling, which means that the cables uh, you plug them into the power supply. So the cables you don't use, you can unplug them and take them out of the computer casing, and that really helps on uh, cable management. And getting a, a good airflow in the casing. Um, when it comes to memory, I just chose this uh, six gig uh, triple channel uh, kit from OC Set, and uh, it's a 1600 megahertz kit. You don't need 1600 megahertz; you can do with 1300 megahertz. But um, 1600 megahertz enables some overclocking if you want to do that. And the motherboard I chose is a Gigabyte uh, GAEX58UD5. Uh, it's a long, long uh, name. Uh, it has a 1366 chipset um, or a socket for the CPU and uh, it has, the chipset is actually X58. Um, this one is pretty expensive, it's uh, $270. You could use its little brother, it's called UD3 instead of UD5. It's uh, almost $100 cheaper. Uh, this one, I'm going to take a look at it um, in a little moment, so just keep that thought. And of course the CPU I chose is i7-920. 2.66 gigahertz uh, quad core CPU. This will perform uh, at the same as the 2500 Mac Pro because they're based on the same Nihalem architecture. They both run at 2.66 gigahertz. They're both quad cores with hyper, -thread th hyper threading, so they will perform the same. Uh, this motherboard actually supports Xeon CPUs, so I think for $30 extra you could get the W3520 Xeon. Um, but 
I don't see the point because uh, I don't think the motherboard can use buffered RAM and that's practically the only difference between this one and this i7 and that Xeon uh, CPU and the total amount for this is $1064 plus shipping uh, you do get a $25 mail-in rebate so when you get the parts you can mail in a, a rebate card and get some uh, money back but so for around thousand dollars plus shipping you can have a machine that is practically the same as a Mac Pro when it comes to performance and also connectivity except some 5R800 and stuff like that um, and that's pretty darn good that's under half the price and of course the Mac Pro comes with the Snow Leopard so for $29 you buy a Snow Leopard and the Mac Pro also comes with iLife and iLife costs $79 so for $1100, $1200 plus shipping that's half the price of a Mac Pro you get your own Mac Pro Hackintosh um, when it comes to the the motherboard I chose uh, we're gonna take a look at the pictures here and uh, what you can see here it has dual gigabit Ethernet it has eight USB ports one 5 r 400 and an optical and coaxial digital out for sound it also had these like <laughs> Apple soldier always makes fun of these lollipop colored jacks but uh, I would say it's a good thing because it means that you have a built-in uh, surround decoder uh, so you can connect any f uh, speaker set uh, and use it with the Mac Pro or iMac or Mac Mini you have to buy a set of speakers that has um, optical in and has the decoder surround decoder built into the speaker set and that limits your choices for speaker sets and also raises the price. With this one you can use any kind of Dolby 5.1 speaker set. Uh, as you can see here it has two PCI Express 16 slots. It's ha it has a PCI Express 8 slot here. So you can have three graphics cards in this if you're running Windows with the Snow Leopard unfortunately you can't run SLI and stuff like that so it, it's not really needed you have two PCI slots for um, different kind of cards and you have a PCI Express 1 and you have a PCI Express 4 and you have six memory slots and here's the five, uh, no, the, the ten serial ATA connectors and also you have some USB headers and some FireWire he Fire headers in here um, and there's some accessories, all the cables you need and all that. Um, when it comes to the little brother of that motherboard, the UD3, you see the price is $190 and you also get a $15 mail-in rebate card. Uh, the reason why I didn't go for this motherboard uh, they are both very good uh, for installing OS 10 on it but the reason I didn't go for this is because it has less USB ports and most important of all it only has four memory slots and that means if you want to let's say run 12 gigs of RAM in a triple channel you have to buy four gig uh, memory sticks and that's a lot more expensive than uh, buying two sets of six gig like uh, like in my setup here so if you want to go 12 gigs the extra price for the motherboard doesn't uh, really uh, 
it's a good investment because the RAM, the memory is so much more expensive if you want to run 12 gigs. So that's uh, about it, I guess, for this part. Uh, the next part will be me building the computer, the Hackintosh. So hope to see you there.